Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I have a confession to make. I really like to do the math when I get presented with ridiculous ideas. And somebody presented to me a really ridiculous idea, which is apparently mentioned in Daniel Ellsberg's book, The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. Now, while there's discussions about realistic plans for nuclear conflict, there is something mentioned called Project Retro, which allegedly involved securing a thousand rocket engines horizontal to the ground so that their thrust would be opposite of the Earth's rotation. In the case of a nuclear missile attack by the Soviet Union, the engines would be ignited in the hope of slowing the Earth's rotation for a brief moment so that the missiles would overfly and miss their targets. Now, the author recalled seeing the Air Force proposal in the 60s and thought it was a joke. But apparently it turned out that the idea had seriously been, been considered. And one wonders for how long it could have been considered. You see, there are some things where you can pretty much dismiss them after you do some back-of-the-napkin mathematics. But even in my head, the numbers for this are so far beyond the scope of reality. I don't know how it could ever have got committed to paper. But let's just do the math just in case. So for those thousand rocket engines, let's use the most powerful rocket engine ever developed by the US, the mighty F1, which powered the Saturn V. It generates 7 meganewtons of thrust and burns about 2.6 tons of fuel and oxidizer every second. So having a thousand of those, that would be burning 2600 tons of fuel per second and generating 7 giganewtons of thrust. Now, since this is supposed to help in the case of a nuclear attack, the burn time is presumably less than the time that it takes for missiles to travel from Russia to the US. So let's just say, for rough numbers, a thousand seconds. That's just over 16 minutes, which seems like a good number. It also simplifies the math. So those thousand engines burning for a thousand seconds would burn 2.6 million tons of fuel and propellant, which sounds like a lot. But actually, it's less than the US daily consumption of oil. Now, against the mass of the Earth, which is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, that would lead to very, very slow accelerations. However, we're actually t attempting to change the rotation. So for that, what you use is the moment of inertia. And a rough approximation is about 8 times 10 to the 37 kilogram meters squared. And if we place all the rocket motors at the equator, that gives us a torque of about 5 times 10 to the 16 newton meters. So the angular acceleration would be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 22 radians per second per second. And if you translate that into distance, after the thousand seconds or so, the Earth would have changed its surface velocity at the equator by 3.56 times 10 to the minus 12 meters per second. So to put that in perspective, that is less than the size of an atom. Of course, you have to account for the fact that uh, it takes some time for the missiles to reach their target. And when you take that velocity and multiply it by the time, turns out that the Earth would have moved, well, you know, equivalent to several atomic radii. Which is sadly not enough to save you from nuclear Armageddon. No, no, no. To save all those targets from a, an atomic blast, they need to move a few meters per second per second prior to the impact. So, yeah, uh, that means you would need about a million billion engines instead of a thousand of them. And, of course, if you do the math, that's about 2.6 times 10 to the 21 kilograms of propellant. Or, to put it another way, that's about 500 times the mass of the Earth's atmosphere. So, even assuming you could build that many engines, once you fired them for the time that was needed to change the Earth's rotation, you would have put 500 times as much gas into the atmosphere, and this would all be incredibly hot combustion products. So even if your targets were survived the nuclear war, everyone would then be incinerated by all the exhaust gases spreading around the planet. It turns out firing rocket engines inside the Earth's atmosphere doesn't really change the rotation of the Earth because the exhaust gases go into the atmosphere, the atmosphere picks up momentum, and then over time it transfers it back into the Earth. So those tests of rocket engines where the engine is sideways doesn't really affect the rotation of the Earth in the long term. 
Of course, you know, this is third-hand knowledge by this point. Maybe they were doing something a little smaller, such as just moving the United States. So again, we can do the math for this, right? The area of the continental US is about 8 million square kilometers. The crust of the Earth is about 32 kilometers uh, thick. The density is about 2.2 tons per cubic meter, and that gives us 5.6 times 10 to the 20 kilos of mass to move around. So taking those thousand engines and firing them, well, that pushes the continental US up to about 10 to the minus 8 meters per second, or 10 to the 5 micrometers in the time that it takes the warhead to reach us. Again, not going to happen. And if you did put enough engines in place so that you could shift the US just by far enough that all those missiles would fall slightly northeast, south or west of their target, yeah, that would take about 100 billion rocket engines. You'd be talking about uh, 10 to the 17 kilos of fuel, basically 5% of the mass of the Earth's atmosphere. So, yeah, it probably wouldn't kill everyone, but it would certainly kill most people. A lot more people than, say, would be killed by nuclear weapons. But really, there are fundamental problems with any idea of pushing the Earth about with rocket engines. Because the Earth, at large scales, behaves more like a liquid than solid rock. If you put that amount of force through the Earth's crust, it would rotate, it would tear, the core of the Earth wouldn't move very much. And indeed, if you applied those sort of accelerations to the Earth, the oceans would suddenly realize the Earth was moving in a different way. And either the west coast or the east coast of the US would just get swamped with massive tsunami. But actually, the oceans do play a big role in natural changes of the Earth's rotation. As the moon pulls the oceans around through the tides, that does tend to drag the Earth, tends to slow it down. And on average, the Earth's rotation slows down by about 17 microseconds per year. But changes can actually happen suddenly. In 2004, the magnitude 9.1 Sumatran earthquake redistributed the mass in the Earth's crust and shortened the length of the day by about 6.8 microseconds in a few minutes. So yeah, the next time somebody suggests trying to change the motions of the Earth, just realise the Earth cares very little for something as wimpy as a rocket. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.